Hi, and welcome back to this Crazy Talk Animator 2 video tutorial on how to use the Character Composer system. So in Crazy Talk Animator, we have the Content Manager and we have actors inside. Here I have this Emma character, which is a G2 character, which means generation, second generation of Crazy Talk Animator um, character bodies. So this character here, Emma, is made of sprites. She has sprites in her face and sprites in her body. And one of the cool things about CTA2 is that if I go into the 3D motion key editor and I could rotate this around, you'll see that our character and all the sprites in the face and in the body are automatically switching. Okay, and that's what's giving us this rotation look. So this is kind of cool. And you realize the great value in a lot of these um, characters and props inside that are generation 2. They have all these sprites for all these different angles. So, besides having a fully sprite-based character, we can also import a character, a body like, uh, let's say, Walter here. And I can replace the face of Walter with a photograph of myself or of somebody else. And this is what we can have at the end. Say this Peter Gibbs character, which I created in the previous tutorial, how to do face fitting. So you're able to use a sprite-based body and you're able to bring in a photograph to do face fitting and create that face for your character. Now, besides doing this for the face, you also have additional content packs that allow you to bring in real life bodies. So if I go into the Reillusion content store and I type in, let's say, Common Folks, you'll see that we have several content packs. We have Common Folks Volume 1, and we have Common Folks Volume 2. So these are photorealistic bodies already made for you. And you could, this allows you to easily bring in your own photograph, do face fitting, and then creating a character very quickly. So just to let you know what these look like, I have these inside. So I can bring one in and then just replace uh, the, the question marks here with my own face. Okay. Now, besides having full, full sprite-based characters like Emma, and then we have a hybrid character here, which is a character made from a photograph for the face. We also have this other type of character like the onion. Now, this character was the face and the body were, was created from a photograph. We, have a, we had a photograph of an onion, and then we had the photograph of a potato for the body. And in another tutorial, we covered on how to import these to replace those body parts. And then later, you bring in additional facial sprites, let's say the sprites for the face and the mouth. And you replace these sprites inside, and now you have a walking, talking character that has a head and a body that was created from a photograph. Now in Crazy Talk Animator 2, we have the, the, the facility that we have a, a universal bone system, character system for every character which means that I can go inside and I can start interchanging parts for my characters. And this is extremely uh, useful because I don't have to spend a lot of time in designing a new character. So I can simply drag and drop different parts and these will automatically attach to my characters. And even if I have animations inside, these animations will still play again. So it's just a matter of selecting something and dropping it inside. And, and, and I'll show you that I can grab an animation and I can uh, drop this animation onto every single character due to this universal uh, bone system that we have. So just as soon as this finish, re finishes replacing all these body parts, just a second. There we go. I'm going to go into animation and I'm going to choose, let's say, 3D. Let's go to perform. And I'm going to go inside and change. And choose something, this falling faint. Let's try this one. So I can drop it onto Emma and she'll perform that. I can drop this onto Peter and now they'll both perform. And I can drop this onto the onion. Okay, pretty cool. So in this tutorial what I'd like to show you is how to create your own character with a character composer system. Now I'm not going to do face fitting with a photograph. I'm just going to do sprite changes inside. So the way to do this, let me show you. I will, first of all, let me go back in here and I want to replace 
the head that I have for Peter with this head here. Let me just drag and drop and that'll replace the head and I will maintain the animation because like I said we have a universal uh, body system that allows us to do this. So let me select my full sprite character and now I will go to the upper left uh, part here where it says character composer. I will select this. And now we are basically in the backstage. This is a, a nice analogy that I like to use. Imagine that in the main window, that's the, the stage where you create all the animation and the props and the scenes and everything. But if you want to change your character body parts or sprites or you know customize your character, you want to take him into the backstage, which for a character is called the character composer system. So let's create something here. If you wish to to create your own character or personality it is always recommended that you have a photograph of your character so today I wish to create a character of Steve Jobs so we all know the iconic outfit that the late Steve Jobs used to wear and this will be our guide for creating our own so let me minimize crazy talk here just to, just so that we can see both windows at the same time. Give me a second. I think that's okay. And let's start. So the first thing I like to do is work with the body. So Steve w always had this iconic uh, black turtleneck and I believe that we have one of these inside too. So I need to go into the body um, folder here for the content manager and I wish to work on upper and I can scroll down just to see what else we have let's see we have a bunch of female parts no let me go back up because I remember that I installed the G2 power tools kit which has additional sprites and body parts and inside we do have a black turtleneck somewhere there we go upper 13 so it's as simple as drag and dropping onto my character. And notice that since these body parts have a G2 icon, that means that they're generation 2, which means that they have all the different sprites for different angles. And that's pretty cool. Let's change the jeans now, the pants. So I'll go to lower and I'll go down. And yeah, this will do. Lower 03. I kind of like these and it automatically replaces the pants. Let me move them up a bit. Okay. Now, uh, what about the shoes? So let's go into shoes. No, I don't like these. Uh, you'll see that these props here, they do not have G2 on the, the icon here. So that means they're generation one, which is for Crazy Talk Animator one, and they only have one angle, the front facing angle. So if you want a multiple uh, dimensional uh, ang uh, character, you, want, you don't want to use those. You want to stick to the G2 ones. And I have a pair of shoes here, tennis shoes, right? Yeah, these will do. These will do nicely. So just drag and drop that. And we now have the shoes. Not bad, but these shoes are green. So let's change the color. How do we do this? So it's simple. Well, once we we have our character, I don't have to select anything. I simply go into the render style. And this will bring up the render style option. And since I'm using the pipeline version, I have advanced settings here. And I can click on that. And now I can see the groups for everything I have. And I can start customizing the colors. Now we see the bones here, these yellow bones. Let's turn these off because we don't need them right now. So I simply go up here show bones and I can turn them off and I will go down to my shoes 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 we have different groups so I don't know which one is controlling that green but let's try the first one the first group shoes number one and I'll bring this down that's the one see that so let's keep it like that and I want to change just the color make it a baby blue and that looks pretty good okay so let me go down so now that we have the body finished I want to start working on the face so again 
it's advised for you to always have a photograph to be your guide. So let me go to my next photograph and I want to work with this one. Let me close the render style and we're going to continue. Let me go put them forward and let's zoom in on the face. So content manager, we worked on body, now we'll go into head. So you can work in any order that you wish. I just like to go you know, one by one, knocking them down. So let's go to face here. And we have different templates and different shapes. So if I grab this face O2, you'll notice that one quick change in the shape of the face will give your character a dramatically different look. You see my character here now looks like a very, very young, um, you know, a young man. And this was simply done by switching out the face. So I can go in and I can choose something more round. I already know which one I want to use. I'm going to go into my folder here. And I wish to use this full face that has a nice full beard. Because Steve, Steve Jobs used to like to have that full beard. And he, has a, he had a very round, roundish head. So I believe this one would look good. The second part I wish to work on are the eyebrows. So I'm going to go inside. Right now we're using these, Brows 01. But I can choose something else. The ones that Steve Jobs has here, they're, they're thick and they're angled upwards. And I believe these Brow 05 will do him justice. So I'm going to try these on. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to the eyes. I believe we're using these. So what about these small beady eyes? No. I like these here, these green eyes, because of they have these dark shadows shadows under them. I kind of relate those to you know people who work long hours, and um, I, I think they'll look pretty good. Now the only thing that we notice is that these eyes are green, but obviously Steve Jobs had brown eyes, not green. But that's not a problem. We can change that in the render style later on. Let's just finish with the facial parts. So I'm going to nose, and I know what to use already. Um, Steve Jobs had this very uh, large, uh, you know, very noticeable nose. So I can choose one like this one, like Nose O2, which is a bit pointy. Or I can go down and choose a pair of, a, a nose that is attached to some glasses. This one, Nose 11. And I'm going to drop this in. And I think this looks great. Pretty spot on. The last part we have to work on is maybe the mouth. Second to last part. And no, I don't want to give him a goatee. I kind of like this one here with the little under chin. Under chin, over chin. I don't know what you would call this part here. I think this looks just like the one he has here. And now the hair. Let's finish up with the hair. So we're using this one. Um, I can switch out any other type of hair. See what that looks like. Now this is actually great for a young Steve Jobs when he was in, in, in college or university. See that? Looks pretty cool. I can also go down. I have a special hair piece that someone made for me. Kind of looks like Johnny Depp's hair. I could try this one out. Ha! Look at this. Now we have a Steven Spielberg look-alike. Now this is kind of cool. But no, that's not the one we need. I need a round head with just a tad of, of a hairline there. And we have it. Hair 13. And I can drag and drop that. And we are on to something. This looks good. So now that we know what we want, I'm going to close this up, expand my my uh, crazy talk, and I'm going to open up the render style. And now I'm going to start choosing, I'm going to start playing around with the the colors. So I think the colors so far are all okay. Let me go down here to choose group. I'm going to go to hair. Oh, first of all, let me try to work on those glasses going to go to head custom 01 I believe that's the group for the glasses oh that's it yes 
So I could increase the contrast, bring the brightness down. Well, let's do it this way. Great, I think we're, we, we did it right there. Just had to bring down the saturation. And now let's work on the hair. So I'm in the head part. So let's choose hair. I can choose if I want to affect the, the same group. Bring the beard down. No, let's bring the beard up, actually. I think right about there looks okay. Then I can choose the other hair. I think this will control the eyebrows. No, nope, I'm wrong. This will control the hair. Maybe the contrast a bit. So you can trial and error it until you match something that looks just right. And remember that we wanted to change that eye color. So I need to change the pupils. And if I bring down, I, I select pupil 01, bring down the brightness. And that looks wonderful. Go to the side. And I like that very much. Okay. Now, what else did we want to change? Oh, yes. We wanted to change the shoes, remember? Oh, we did that already. I'm sorry. So I think we're done. Our character is done. And I can go in different angles and see my new Steve Jobs character. And now I simply have to go back to stage, and this will replace the previous character that I selected. And it'll maintain the animation that we already have inside. Now that's very cool. And if I wish to use my character in the future, I simply have to select him, go to the content manager, okay, go to actor, and I can go to the, my own custom folder. And then I can click on this button down here, add, and then just type in Steve Jobs. And I have my very own character, which I can use in the future. Great, so that's it for this tutorial. We hope it was useful for you, and uh, we hope to see some of your projects in the near future. Thank you again.